folks, we are finally at the end of the line for Bed Bath & Beyond. As far as the bankruptcy court is concerned, this is all done and dusted and over. Yesterday, I posted with the fading hours of the day, the hearing of a stay pending appeal on the ruling of the bankruptcy court. And that was shot down in a blaze of glory. Well, <laughs> maybe glory isn't the right word when the judge threatens to sanction you because your motion is entirely frivolous and then suggests that the appeals court, if they agree with the ruling, should do the same. My concern is that continued litigation on these issues would serve ultimately no purpose other than to waste the bankruptcy of the estate's resources and time is unwarranted. The court is inclined to consider for further motion practice before this court the, in, the imposition of sanctions under Rule 9011. The court would urge the district court, if it agrees with this court's views on the merits of the appeal, to consider sanctions under Rule 8020 for frivolous appeals. Yikes. Now, I do realize for some people, the mainstream hucksters of the Bed Bath & Beyond movement, that the plan moving forward is not the end of their campaign. In fact, they would probably go as far to say, That's a good thing. Of course, the rest of us who don't perpetually reside upon Mount Stupid in the Dunning-Kruger chart have, you know, figured out that that's not the case. And if you don't believe me, the plan administrators in this hearing made it clear. There is no distribution to shareholders. Heck, even the secured debt holders are likely to not receive their full recovery. Um, I, I want to briefly summarize the plan that was confirmed by this court on September 14th of 2023. Under the plan, it is not projected that unsecured, general unsecured creditors will be paid in full. The projected recovery set forth in the disclosure statement for the general unsecured creditors is at best 2.5% on account of their general unsecured claims. The pre-petition secured lender is also not being paid in full. They're still owed in excess of $200 million. And the unsecured creditors can only recover anything if the secured claims are paid in full. But even if they are, the general unsecured creditors might still only see one or two percent on the amount they're owed. What counsel for the estate is simply explaining to all you knuckle-dragging morons is the bankruptcy debt waterfall. Common equity is at the very bottom. They get paid the last after all the creditors and preferred equity. And she is explaining to you in the simplest crown-drawing terms that some of the secured creditors, let alone the unsecured creditors, are not being able to be paid in full. Even if there was some magical way that there was some sort of spin-off, reverse merger, butterfly wings bullshit, you're not getting any of it. It would go to the creditors first. So in short, you're fucked. So you get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir! So yes, none of the Bed Bath & Beyond shareholders are getting anything, and that includes PP Seeds and his little circle jerk party. Nothing. Nada. Zip. Zilch. That's the end of it. And that's the end of this video. So, I've got a couple other projects to work on this weekend. I'll catch you folks later.